This is part 39 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we will discuss why route guards are required in general and an example of can deactivate route guard. First, let's understand why route guards are required. Consider this create employee data entry form. This is a pretty big form. I have filled almost all the fields on this form. Assume at this point, I accidentally clicked either on the list link or on the browser back button. Imagine what's going to happen. The application immediately redirects us to the list route and as a result, we lose all our data on the create employee form. It would have been much better if the application displayed a confirmation like this. Are you sure you want to discard your changes? Once I click OK, the application discards the changes and allows the route navigation to move to the list route. On the other hand, if the user clicks cancel, then the application cancels route navigation. We stay on the create route and we still have the data on this create employee form. This can be very easily achieved using a route guard called can deactivate. In Angular, we've got several route guards. Let's quickly look at one by one and what each can do. Can deactivate guard navigation away from the current route. Can activate guard navigation to a route. Can activate child guard navigation to a child route. Can load guard navigation to a feature module loaded asynchronously. And finally, resolve perform route data retrieval before route activation. We'll discuss all these guards with examples in our upcoming videos. In this video, we'll look at implementing can deactivate route guard. There are three simple steps to use a route guard. First, we build the route guard. Next, we register the guard with the Angular dependency injection system. And finally, tie the guard to a route that we want to protect. Let's look at these three steps in action one by one. We want the code for our guard to be present in its own file. So to this employees folder, I'm going to add a new file. Now we are implementing this guard for our create employee form. So I'm going to name this file create employee. And we are at the moment implementing can deactivate guard. So I'm also going to append can deactivate guard. And a guard is implemented as a service. So I'm also going to append dot service and this is a TypeScript file. So let's also append dot ts file extension. A guard service is nothing but a class. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a class. I'm going to name this class create employee can deactivate guard service. Now, each guard in Angular has its own interface. For example, can deactivate guard has its own interface called can deactivate. Similarly, can activate has can activate interface, so on and so forth. So let's make our guard class service implement can deactivate interface. This interface supports generics. We are implementing this can deactivate guard for our create employee component. So let's specify create employee component as the generic argument. We don't have both of these types that is can deactivate and create employee component. So let's include the required import statements to import both of them. This can deactivate interface has got one method. Since our class is implementing that interface, the class has to provide implementation for the interface method. So let's right click on can deactivate interface and go to its definition. And if we look at the method it has got, notice it also has the same name as that of the interface. The only difference is the method name starts with a lowercase c, whereas the interface name starts with a capital letter C. Now let's copy the definition of this method paste it within our service class and then we'll change the bits that are required. Notice this method has got three parameters. For our implementation, we don't need all the three parameters. We only need this first parameter. So to keep it simple, let's delete the rest of the two parameters. Notice the first parameter that is coming into this can deactivate method is the component for which we are implementing this can deactivate guard. In our case, the component is create employee component. So let's specify the type as create employee component. Look at the return type. This method can either return an observable of Boolean, a promise of Boolean, or simply a Boolean. 
Again, to keep this method simple, I'm going to delete the observable and promise. Now, if you want this guard service to allow route navigation and navigate to the new route, then return true from this method. On the other hand, if you want to cancel the route navigation and stay on the current route, then return false. In our case, if our create employee form is dirty, meaning if we have some data entered on the form, and if we accidentally click either on this list link or on the browser back or forward buttons, we want the route navigation to be cancelled. So at that point, we want to return false from this method. On the other hand, if this form is not dirty, meaning we have not entered anything, then we want to return true, meaning we want to allow route navigation. So the question is how to check if this create employee form is dirty. Well, if you look at the scan deactivate method, notice the create employee component for which we are implementing the scan deactivate guard is being passed in as a parameter. So within this create employee component, if we have a public property which helps us determine if the component is dirty or not, then our problem is solved. Now, if we take a look at our create employee component view template, notice right here, we are creating a template reference variable by exporting the ng-form directive. Remember, this ng-form directive has got dirty property which helps us check if our create employee form is dirty or not. But at the moment, we don't have access to this ng-form directive within the component class. Now, to be able to access this ng-form directive in the component class, we use at view child decorator. So within the component class, let's use at view child decorator. To this at view child decorator, we pass the name of the template reference variable as the selector. Now if we take a look at the view template, the name of the template reference variable is employee form. So let's copy that and specify it as the selector for our at view child decorator. And we want to create a public property within our component class. We can give this property any meaningful name we want. I'm going to name it create employee form. And this is going to be of type ng form because that's what we are exporting into this template reference variable. Here we use a lowercase n, but whereas within our component class, we use a capital letter n. So now within our component class, we have this create employee form, which we can use to check if the form is dirty or not. This is a public property, so we can even access it within our guard service. So within the can deactivate method, we can check if the component create employee form is dirty. If the form is dirty, we want to present the user with the JavaScript confirmation. And the message is, are you sure you want to discard your changes? On the other hand, if the employee form is not dirty, we want to allow the navigation without any confirmation. So we simply return true. Now, since this guard class is implemented as a service, it's a good practice to decorate the service class with at injectable decorator, irrespective of whether that service has injected dependencies or not. So first, let's import injectable from Angular Core and decorate the service class with this at injectable decorator. All right, this concludes our first step, that is building the guard service. The next step is to register our guard service with the Angular dependency injection system. So to be able to use this guard service, we need to register it in a module. At the moment, in our application, we have only one module, and that's the root module app module, which is in this file app.module.ts. So let's first import our guard service and then register it using the provider's property of this at ng module decorator. Finally, we need to tie our guard to a route. In our case, we want to tie the guard to this create route. So first, let's format this a bit. We want can deactivate guard, so we use can deactivate property. And this is an array, meaning we can add more than one guard, but in our case, we only have one guard, and that is our 
create employee can deactivate card service. So let's save all our changes and then take a look at the browser. Now let's make this form dirty. At this point, if we click on this list link, notice we get our JavaScript confirmation. Are you sure you want to discard your changes? If I click cancel, the route navigation is cancelled and we stay on our create employee form. On the other hand, if I click OK, the changes are discarded and we are navigated to the list route. The browser back and forward buttons also work exactly the same way. Notice when the form is dirty and when we click on the browser back button, we still get our JavaScript confirmation. When I click cancel, we stay on the current route and when I click OK, we go back to the list route. There are some limitations of this can deactivate guard that we need to be aware of. This can deactivate guard does not work if we type the URL in the address bar directly. Let me show you in action what I mean. We are on the create route. Let me make this form dirty. And at this point, if we type directly in the address bar, notice the can deactivate guard is not working in this case. This can deactivate guard will also not work if we close the browser. Let's go to the create route. Let's make the form dirty. And at this point, if we close the browser window, notice our guard does not work. This guard also does not work when navigating to an external URL like Dell.com, Microsoft.com, Google.com, etc. Let's start our server one more time. Now, in the navigation menu right here, let's include a link to an external website. Our navigation menu is in the view template of our root component, app component. So within the app component, just after our create link, let's include a link to Prajim Tech website. And instead of using router link directive, let's use the href attribute and we want to navigate to prajimtech.com website. Notice in the navigation menu, we have the Prajim Tech link now. Let's navigate to the create route, make the form dirty, and at this point, when we click on Prajim Tech link, notice how our route guard does not work. So, three simple steps to implement a route guard in your application. The first step is to build the route guard service itself. Next, register the route guard with the Angular dependency injection system. And finally, tie the guard to a route that you want to protect. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.